Here we are with Theo Elida, whose film, When We Leave, is Germany's official entry into the Academy Awards for Best Foreign Language Film. We don't know at this point whether or not you'll be nominated as one of the five. Is this your feature film debut? You wrote, directed, and produced this, Fail. That's correct. That's my debut, yeah. And the story is about a Turkish woman from Turkey whose uh, parents, whose family is in Germany, who is unhappy in her marriage. I think it begins with her having an abortion. And she takes her son and leaves. So when we talk about the title to begin with, who is the we of when we leave? Well, all, all of the characters portrayed, basically, it's also about, it's, a, it's of course about Umay leaving her husband, going back to her family, hoping for support and loyalty and, you know, some hope back there. Then she has to leave again at a certain point of the story. Um, she has to leave her family again, or she tries to leave her family. But also, um, her family left their home country and migrated. And when we leave, it's also a metaphor on the fact when we leave things we should and could overcome, like archaical traditions, when we leave principles, uh, when we step over the shadows of our principles in order to reach out for one another in the name of empathy. So it's kind of referring to those um, you know, issues. Well, what about the idea that you know, you're delving into this culture of, uh, of Turkish emigres in Germany and their family traditions? And I mean, Fatih Akin, who is very famous in Germany, has tackled this kind of subject, but he is from that ethnographic uh, minority. Mm. This is something part of his life. How did you get interested in this? You seem to be the quintessential, you know, blonde German. I'm a Jewish Austrian to start oh, with. Oh, okay, but, um, okay. <laughs> um, 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 and I probably don't exactly look like that either, so, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, um, well, I think, um, you know, like you do when you work on stores where you really get to dwell deep into the material, you just do an enormous amount of research, which I did for two years before I started writing the script. I did two years of everyday research, you know, living with families, um, living in women's shelter houses, you know, talking to so many and listening to so many people and just, you know, trying to study a culture and a language. Um, I'm married to somebody who um, brings in this background, you know, um, they migrated to Germany when he was four years old, so it's, of course, it's family as well. Um, and then, you know, I think it's, um, I think if you set out to tell a universal story at its core, or if, if the core element of being a universal story is what's most important to you and you, you work on the script in this way, it shouldn't matter so much where you come from. As long as you do, you know, you have a responsibility, you are accountable for what world you're portraying because you take your emotions, you're trying to convey, and you set them in a the world and you better explore it as good as you can because that's part of our job, right? I mean, if you're covering an issue, you better know the hell what the f you're talking about. Right, right, <laughs> you know? exactly. So it's just what I would call a decent, decent research, you know, which always goes outward and inward. You know, you have those two things and just, ex you know, exploring a milieu, exploring culture and language. I, I shot 40% in language, 40% uh, in Turkish, you know, so yes. I had to educate myself on the language as well, of course. Well, the um, movie begins with an encounter um, on a street yeah. and we see... Ume, who is the, going to be the heroine of the movie, confronted by a man uh, who looks like he could be her husband or her brother, and a young man, and he brings out a, a gun, and then it goes back. And so you sort of start off by thinking, this is going to be a tragedy. This is a depressing story that we're having here, <laughs> it's not basically. It's a comedy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what about that idea of what you want the audience to kind of a journey to go on? Did you think of it at the beginning kind of as a, a thriller, like who are these people and what's going to happen to them? Or once we find out what she's doing, we're sort of concerned for her safety through the rest of the movie until we get to that scene again. 
Yeah, right. It's I, I think well, it was important for me to tell the story in a way where it's more about how things happen than what things happen. Of course, there's a thriller element to it in the sense that you know you try to entertain people. Obviously, you try you know don't bore and don't confuse. The old you know thing. <laughs> you also have in the editing room. Uh, I mean, you pretty much you know uh, like to live up to that one, but. Um, it was really my challenge was to be within a family and try to figure out those you know psychological dynamics going on between those family members and not make it so much about oh guess what's happening next but more like guess how's it how's it happening next and what does it what are the inner moments of the characters how how does it affect the relationships and so on and so forth and this kind of you know what do you call it in English this um, parent like you begin with something and you end with something. What do you uh, call uh, it? Uh, arc. Arc. Well, not the arc. It's basically when you have a sentence and then you open a little something, you write something, and you close it again. Par parentheses. Yeah, parentheses. Right, exactly. So this parentheses was just um, seemed like an appropriate um, dramaturgic, uh, uh, you know, uh, tool that I like in films as well. And it was just there when I wrote it. I kind of it was just one of the images that was um, there very early on because you, when you write you sometimes just have atmosphere and certain you know, sounds and images that are there and you build history. Now how close is Ume, the heroine, who has decided she cannot stay with this husband, they have nothing in common and he beats her, uh, and she is not going to be separated from her son. When At a certain point we find out that he doesn't want her back. Uh, to but come back to, to Turkey, son. but he wants the boy. And her family supports the husband's wishes, always against her through this whole yeah. story. It's sort of, I guess this is the, it, it, there's a woman who says to her, if, they, if your family has to choose between you and the community, you have no choice, you have no chance. Mm -hmm. They will choose the community. How close is that to reality? Is it worse than what we're seeing in this movie? Is there more violence done to women than what we see here in your film? Globally? Well, in in Germany. Let's take it there. Um, see, it's so hard to generalize, but obviously there's a lot of violence because we do have quite a number of so-called honor killings also in Germany. Uh, we do have them in all over Europe, and we do have them obviously globally to a very, very large extent. I mean, the official UN numbers are 5,000 straight honor killings a year, saying that the real number definitely, according to the UN reports, is definitely something between 10 and 100,000 women a year. And if you travel to certain countries, there are cities where the average of women being killed to so due to so-called honor killing mechanisms um, it has an average in one city of 290 women a year, no. like in Pakistan. So, see, the, it's the violence done to women globally um, across all cultures and ethnical borders, and you know, no matter what the religion is or whatever the country is, is is enormous. I mean, it still is, and um, you can't you can't generalize the Turkish community in Germany, obviously, right? I mean. People living in Germany who have Turkish roots, it's more than 2.7 million people. They are not a heterogeneous group. They're the biggest minority in Germany. And I think it's just about time, I'm Austrian myself, that we in Germany, and I live in Germany, and I live happily in Germany, but that we in Germany find a different way of dealing with minorities. Because to me, they are Germans. They are more Germans than I am, because they were born in Germany. So make them feel accepted, make them feel wanted, make them feel appreciated, because then it will be easier to sit down at a table and really address those issues that maybe are not working out so well, and not everything's working out well. There is women issues, there is educational issues, there is language issues, but there's also a big issue of how, how much do people are bringing in this richness of a different background? How much do they feel appreciated and wanted? And if you feel more appreciated, it's much easier to overcome old structures. It's much easier to walk up to your dad saying, you know what, this is not a set of rules and of values I have. The freedom of my sister, protecting my sister, means protecting her freedom. It doesn't mean protecting her sexual innocence. I'm not a better man just because I'm controlling sexual innocence of my sister or my mom or my wife or 